At some point in your life, you have to stand for something. You have to take a stance and say, this I can accept. However, this right here is unacceptable. We do this in our homes. There are people who we trust, people who we know to be honest and of good integrity. And we can welcome those people in and accept them into our homes. And then there are people who we want to keep at a distance. We can love them with the love of Christ from a distance, but it doesn't mean that we can allow them into our homes if we know that their character is questionable. Likewise, if someone attempted to make you do something that is directly against God's word, against what you know to be right, I'm sure that the majority of us would have the boldness to stand up for what is good, for what is pleasing and right to the Lord. Which brings me to the core part of my message today. And this is to encourage you to stand up to the enemy. Absolutely refuse to be intimidated by the devil. Refuse to tolerate his sneaky attacks and temptations. Give no room to Satan. Give him nothing to work with at all. Many of you have lived in fear far too long, and it is time. It's time to live in the power and might of Jesus Christ. No longer should you be a timid, quiet, shaky Christian man or woman just because the devil threatens to make some noise. Don't you know to whom you belong? Don't you know that you were purchased with the precious blood of the Son of God? So it's time. It's time to stand up boldly and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over your life. That means no devil or demon, no dark force or principality can have a say over your life. God has the final word. I encourage you to stand up for righteousness in a world that is lost. You are an ambassador of the Most High. So stand up to the lies of the enemy. Stand up with the truth of the gospel. Stand up with the strength of the Holy Spirit. Stand up and wage war in the heavenlies through prayer. You must stand up and embrace your identity as a child of God. Now is the time for you to stand firm. Now is the time to be unwavering. You need to have a strong foundation, a foundation built on the very word of God. In order to have a firm foundation, you must know the word of God for yourself and know what it says about you. Know that it tells you in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now let us pray. Father God, I praise you. I say that you alone deserve to be honored and reverenced. I pray, Lord, that you would give me the strength to stand strong. Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14 say, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Lord Jesus, give me the strength to stand up and walk on the narrow road. A road where I have to put my flesh under subjection. A road where I am led by your word and your commandments. Lord, help me to stay away from the broad road. I ask you to protect me from the lure of the pleasures of this world. God, keep me and help me to guard my heart from the love of money, from chasing worldly power, and from chasing material things. Instead, I choose the pursuit of godliness. 
Help me, King Jesus, to be wise with my decisions. Help me to be wise about how I spend my time and what I get involved in. Give me the wisdom to look and analyze everything in my life and ask myself the question, does it glorify the Lord? Does it increase my faith? Does it help me to walk in obedience to the will of God? Father, your word says in Proverbs 4, verse 23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Lord Jesus, give me a heart that is diligent in prayer, a heart that is diligent in meditating on your word. Give me a heart that is diligent to feed my inner man and grow in my spiritual life. Lord, give me the presence of mind to know that each and every moment that I'm alive, I am making a decision. A decision whether or not to prioritize God or to do as the flesh desires. Father, help me to make the right decisions. Decisions that will benefit my spiritual life as opposed to feeding my carnal desires. Even if I'm going through difficult circumstances, help me, Lord. Help me to make the right decisions. Help me to decide to fully trust in you. Help me, Lord, to stand up in full trust and confidence that you will make a way for me where there seems to be no way. And even when I'm going through a tough time, I will still decide to worship you, Lord Jesus. Even if I should find myself under pressure, Give me the strength, Lord, to still sing praises to your name and to still declare that you are good. Teach me to be more trusting. Help me to build my faith. May the Holy Ghost teach me and remind me that the troubles I face, the pain that I feel, the people who reject me can all be a blessing in disguise. The tough situations and trials I go through can be the Lord setting me up. You could be positioning me for increase, for healing, for breakthrough. Holy Spirit, help me to see that the Lord sometimes uses our troubles to remind us that He is a deliverer. He is our Savior. He is our hope and rescue. He is the chief cornerstone and the solution to all of our problems. Father, even though it may hurt when trouble comes about, please give me the grace to keep an eternal perspective. God, I thank you for giving me strength. Psalm 59 verse 16 says, But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Indeed, Father, I will sing of your strength. I will sing of your steadfast love. I will glorify your name and sing that you have been my fortress in times of distress. And I thank you, Lord. You alone are worthy of all my honor, and you alone are worthy of all my praise. I thank you for hearing my prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever had a moment where you've quietly said to yourself, I need to do better. I have to start doing better. Now, you could have said this at your job or you could have said this after you forgot something important. But I guess the good thing is you've identified that there has to be an improvement in some area of your life. And so, my brothers, my sisters in Christ, have you ever stopped and thought, I need to do better when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to how much effort you're putting into reading God's word, have you ever said to yourself, 
I have to start doing better. When it comes to your prayer life, when it comes to your priorities, there is always, always room for improvement when you're a Christian. There is always another gear, another level of effort that you can reach. Absolutely no one on this earth can ever say, I've maxed out all I can do in terms of my relationship with God. None of us can ever get to know God enough. None of us can ever spend enough time seeking the face of Jesus Christ. I once heard someone say, the devil doesn't mind how many times we go to church in a week. It's only when we live with the awareness of the presence of God and allow his spirit to control our lives that the devil gets upset. It takes much more than a few hours per week to be a godly Christian who makes an impact on the world. It takes sustained time in his presence. How true is that? Time alone with God is crucial for every believer. We need to abide in Him, to be still and know that He is God. We need sustained time in His presence, and we all need to do better. The Amplified Translation of 2 Timothy 2, verse 15 says, Study and do your best. To present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial. Who has no reason to be ashamed. Accurately handling. And skillfully teaching the word of truth. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 24 to 25 it says. Do you not know. That in a race all the runners run their very best to win. But only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Now, every athlete who goes into training and competes in the games is disciplined and exercises self-control in all things. They do it to win a crown that withers. But we, we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Let's do better, saints. When it comes to studying the Word of God, do better. When it comes to prayer, we've got to do better. When it comes to self-control, I encourage you to do better. Now, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, great is your faithfulness, Lord. Great and mighty are you. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus, as I seek to do better in my spiritual life. God, your word says in John 15, verse 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. I pray that the Holy Spirit would help me to do better. Help me to improve in my prayer life. Help me to have more urgency about spending time alone with the Lord. Holy Spirit, help me to do better in in terms of meditating on the Word of God day and night. Help me to do better as I strive to be obedient to your Word, which says in Titus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Lord, I pray that you will give me a heart that is ready and willing to do good always. Lord, give me a heart that loves and refuses to slander or abuse anyone but instead help me to be a kind person, a loving person. Lord, I want to be one who is filled with the love of God. 
Lord, I desire to grow in faith. I desire to grow in understanding. I desire to grow in wisdom. So God, please help me to grow in all of these areas. Master, through the power of the Holy Ghost, I trust and believe that a transformation can and will take place in my life. Where I am weak, through the strength that you provide, I will be made strong. I will be able to overcome. I place my faith in what your word says, Lord. In 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 to 10, it reads, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Lord, I'm thankful that your grace is indeed sufficient for me. Indeed, your loving kindness and your mercy are more than enough for me. Your grace and mercy is always available to me, regardless of the situation. And I truly am grateful, King Jesus. May your power be perfected. May it be completed and shown to be most effective in my weakness. So that way, you get the glory, God. You get the honor. Father, your word says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Your word tells me that I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. I am so thankful for your love, King Jesus, that even though you knew everything about me, you knew all of my shortfalls and all of my mistakes, but you still died in my place and you opened up the way to eternal life for me. I thank you for listening to my prayer. Be magnified, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Philippians 1, verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. Take a moment and consider, what does the Bible mean when it says, this very thing. What is this very thing? Why should we be confident of it? Why is this very thing so important that it's associated with the beginning of a good work that will be completed until the day of Jesus? Saints, I believe that when the Bible talks about this very thing, it's talking about your salvation. And the reason I believe this is because when you are saved and when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you don't automatically become detached from your flesh. You don't automatically become this perfect person who never gets angry or upset. That's not the case. You need to work on your salvation by seeking more of Jesus Christ, by meditating on his word, by pursuing a closer relationship with Him, by yielding to the Holy Spirit. 
your salvation never stops. That's why Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Will complete it. Your salvation is not complete until the day of Jesus Christ's return. Philippians 2 verse 12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Did you hear that? The Bible tells you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do you know what this means? It means you need to continue to work out your salvation to cultivate it, to bring it to full effect, to actively pursue spiritual maturity with the fear of God. And as you do this, do it with caution because your eternal destiny depends on it. Once you are saved and born again, there is no curtain call or final whistle. Once you are saved and born again, that is just the beginning. The beginning of a good work. The beginning of the good fight of faith. The beginning of running a good race. The beginning of discovering the kingdom of God which we are all called to seek first. And now, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for your most wonderful sacrifice on the cross. On Calvary, you took my sins even though you were innocent. On the cross, Father, you stood in my place and took the verdict of guilty all so that I could be saved. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as I work out my salvation with fear and trembling, as your word says in Philippians 2 and 12, may you help me. Help me to get closer and closer to you. Help me not to fall into the ways of this world. May the Holy Spirit keep me from backsliding. Fill me with a holy fire, a righteous desire, and a pure passion, Lord. Cover me and conceal me with your blood, King Jesus. Your word tells me in Proverbs 4, verse 23, Watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flow the springs of life. Help me to guard over my heart, King Jesus. Help me to be alert and spot anything that may cause me to fall into sin. I pray, King Jesus, that you give me a heart that is willing to put aside all selfish and sinful desires. I want to be a believer who is able to critically self-evaluate themselves. Help me to be diligent and careful to avoid anything that might cause me to fall into wickedness. I pray that I would never become a person who has a form of godliness but rather may I develop a genuine fear of God, a genuine hunger and thirst for holiness. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live in faith in the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Lord, this life is no longer mine, but I will live this life through you and for you. I set aside my will, and I choose to submit to your will. I set aside my priorities, and I choose to prioritize you. I choose to follow you, Lord Jesus and not anyone else or anything else in this world. Work within me, Lord Jesus. Purge my heart of anything that displeases you. 
Remove pride from within me. Remove any jealousy or envy. Remove any attraction to uncleanliness. I pray that I may be drawn to holiness. I pray that I may be drawn to pure things, to good things, things that are above and not of this earth. Give me a mind that is focused on you. A mind that loves to meditate on your word. Ephesians 4 verse 24 says, And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me to put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature of Christ. You are my hiding place, Lord Jesus, and my faith is in you. It's only you that will protect me from trouble and surround me with the songs of deliverance. You are my keeper, Lord, the one who watches over me and my family, the one who provides for me and my family. I pray that as I begin each day, and even as I end each day, may you be first in all that I do. I pray, Father, that I may always abide under your shadow, under your divine care and protection. Help me not to be shaken or to stagger in my faith, but instead to be firm on the foundation that is your word. I thank you for listening to my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus died on a cross. He did rise again in victory, but the fact that he had such an unpleasant and painful death on the cross makes me think. How great must his love have been to endure such pain? How great of an example he set about being obedient to God the Father by him willing to sacrifice everything down to his life. So when Luke 14 verse 27 says, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Here's the Amplified translation for that very same verse. Whoever does not carry his own cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow after me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living and, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me, cannot be my disciple. So if I may ask you the question, when you look at the cross, what does the cross stand for? What does it symbolize to you? Many will say it stands for Jesus Christ and the ultimate sacrifice. It stands for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Others will say it stands for salvation. It stands for eternal life. It stands for love holiness, righteousness, forgiveness. It, it represents what Christ came on earth to do and to give his life for us. Now, since Luke 14 verse 27 says, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The question is, what do you stand for? Do you carry your cross and stand for the love of Jesus Christ? Do you stand to represent the life of Jesus Christ, a life that was marked with righteousness, obedience, prayer, and forgiveness? Are you carrying your cross? You see, we need to truly examine ourselves. The mouth can so easily profess something, but it's in your heart and it's in your actions that the truth is revealed. What do you stand for? Do you stand with a willing heart? Should God speak to you today 
Would you be willing to sacrifice the most important thing in your life for Him? When people see you, do they see the love of Jesus Christ in you? Do they look at you and think, I want the peace on this person's life. I want the joy that this person has. Do other people look at you and see a disciple of Christ? Your life should be characterized by what you stand for, by who you stand for. Pick up your cross, saints. Matthew 10 verse 38 says, And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. The word of God is clear regarding this. Either take up your cross and follow Christ, or you're not worthy of him. What will your choice be? Now let us pray. Dear King Jesus, help me to take up my cross and follow you. I am willing to set aside the pursuit of money if it means that I have you. I'm willing to leave my friends if they are pushing me away from you. Lord, I'm willing to set aside my career, to set aside my ambitions if they take me away from your will, King Jesus. There is nothing more important in my life than you, Father. And so, as I take up my cross, produce good fruit within me. No more bitterness, no more hatred, but produce the good fruit of love within me. Instead of always experiencing emotions of discouragement and constant gloom, produce in me a tranquil heart, a peaceful heart. Proverbs 14 verse 30 says, A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Remove any feelings of envy within me, Lord. Help me to be content and fulfilled with you. Lord, as I make the decision to follow you and be your disciple, take me as I am and begin a good work within me. Should you see that I don't have self-control or I'm not gentle, then I ask that you would help me in that area, Lord. Should you find me not to be long-suffering or impatient, then I pray you would work through me and arrest these negative and ungodly character traits of mine. When unbelievers look at me, may they see the fruit of Christ in my life. Instead of endless worry and anxiety, things that attack so many people in this world, may they see that I stand on the solid rock that is Christ Jesus, and in you there is no place for worry or anxiety. Instead of pride or arrogance, help me to stand for humility to stand for meekness. Lord Jesus, instead of me being controlled by my impulses, passions, or lust, strengthen me and purify me, Lord, so that I can be able to stand for self-control. Let my life represent who I stand for, and that is you. Matthew 6, verse 24, No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. I declare that you are my one and only master. You are my leader, King Jesus. Indeed, no one can serve two masters at once, light and darkness do not mix, and I choose to stand to follow the light of Christ. I commit to you, Lord Jesus, and my honest request is that the Holy Spirit would work within my heart and mind so that I will have the kind of commitment that says, not my will, Lord, but your will is all important. It's not about my wants and my feelings, but it's all about you, Lord Jesus. My commitment to you is based from a place of love 
and humility. Holy Spirit, give me the kind of commitment that will crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. Help me to carry my cross, Lord Jesus. Your word in Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. In you, Father, I will be satisfied. In you, King Jesus, I will be nourished by your goodness. I glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Be blessed and be glorified. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Regarding this passage of scripture, one commentary reads, Paul writes to those who are saved by faith in Christ. Their goal was to live with an eternal perspective rather than a focus on the rules and regulations of this world. Rather than following a set of rules, Christians are to submit moment by moment to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Paul then explains why believers are to focus on eternal matters. Christians are to set their minds above, so to speak, because that is where Christ is. Christ is not on earth or in the grave. He is at God's right hand. I would like to encourage you to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. We are to set our minds and hearts on godly things, heavenly things things that concern the kingdom of God. Sometimes life can, can get us sidetracked. Life can keep us intensely busy, and sometimes life can result in us becoming distracted on what should be our number one priority, and that is Christ Jesus. I believe that when Paul encourages us to set our hearts on things above, that means waking up every day and saying, Lord, I am yours. Be praised today. Help me to focus on your word and on your will today. So would you join me in this prayer today, seeking that the Lord may help me and you to set our minds and hearts, to focus our minds and hearts on things above. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are gracious and faithful marvelous in all your ways. My prayer today is that you help me to renew my mind. Help me to focus on the eternal, on heavenly things. Help me to have a hunger that desires and chases heavenly rewards instead of earthly praise from men. I seek to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant from you. So I ask that you guide me to do all you have called me to do today and every day. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you aid me to stay focused on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help me because so many things are always competing for my attention, and so I need the supernatural strength that you offer to, to keep me from being distracted and being pulled away from God. Your word in John 15 from verse 5 says that I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, but without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, 
and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Father, give me the grace to be obedient to your word and to abide in you. Help me to abide in you and, and you in me so that I can be a Christian who bears much fruit in your kingdom. Keep me from relying on my own resources and abiding outside of your will, because without you, I'm like a branch that is withered. Your promise to me is that if I abide in you and if your words abide in my heart, then I will ask whatever I desire and it shall be done for me. I thank you for such a promise, and I invite you into every area of my heart and mind. Fill me with your presence, Lord. I invite you to abide within me and begin to change me inside out, so that I can begin to demonstrate godly characteristics, so that, so that I may begin to show compassion to others, so that I can have a humble spirit, a patient and forgiving spirit. And above all, help me to be a Christian who has and shows the love of Christ to others. I pray that if I've had my mind and priorities elsewhere, may you bring me to refocus and set my heart on chasing after you, on going after your presence and search for direction in my life. I pray that you protect me from being led astray by what the world's standards are or from worldly expectations and behavior. Lord, I pray that I may receive the mind of God just as your word in Philippians 2 verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Help me, Jesus, to be diligent about my thoughts whether they are thoughts that will bring glory and praise to your name or if they are thoughts that will lead me to sin. Help me to be intentional about casting down each and every single thought that is not of you. I ask that the Holy Spirit will convict me and challenge me when it comes to the things that I decide to focus my mind and meditate on. If doors are opening in my life, I pray that it's within your will, O oh Lord, and that you may be the one that is orchestrating every breakthrough, every new opportunity. Father, I submit to you that if I am being elevated and blessed in any area of my life, may it ultimately be within your will and part of your divine plan. May it ultimately be you placing me where you want me to be and positioning me to be a productive and effective vessel for you to work through. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bring light into the dark areas of my life. Remove anything that is not good within me. I allow you to work in my heart, renew my mind, heal my soul, mend my emotions even, I know that in you, I am enough and complete. Transform my heart with your supernatural power. I pray that I may never be led by human expectations. I pray that I may be bold to stand up and live according to your word. I thank you for the mercy and for the measure of grace that you have given me so that I can be fearless I bless your name for the power that you offer me so that I can renew my mind. Grant me the strength to outlast the assaults and plots against my mind from the devil. I know that when I trust in you, Lord, I will always be sustained. I will always be preserved. God, I believe your word to be true and I will align myself accordingly because when I do that, I am assured of total restoration and the transforming of my mind. I thank you for giving me hope and strength for today and tomorrow through your word. I thank you that it is your will for me to live with a renewed mind, a mind free from bondage and oppressive thoughts. I praise you for promising that you will keep those whose minds are stayed upon you in perfect peace. 
Keep me in perfect peace, Lord, as I fight each day to set my thoughts and affections on things above. I receive the grace that you have given me so that I can stand and say no, I will not conform to this world. May the highest praise be given unto you. You are a good and faithful God. I thank you for hearing this prayer. Grant me the petition of my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here's what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 from verse 15 to 18, the Word of God says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And then verse 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The role of the Spirit in us is to remind us of the words of Christ. He is actively doing the work of Christ and was sent by Christ to dwell in believers. Indeed, God the Holy Spirit is a wonderful helper. He helps us in our weakness. The Bible says that the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit that we should desire and chase are for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So join me in prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit to fill our lives, for His presence to be real and made known to us in our daily walk with God and in our homes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I humbly bow before you today, the Prince of Peace and the Risen King. Thank you for gifting me with the Holy Spirit, my helper and my comforter. I am grateful for all the blessings that I have received and your constant presence that seeks to keep me in the will of God. I am rejoicing at the opportunity to approach you in prayer as I invite your holy presence. I hold on to your promise, Lord, that you will never leave me nor forsake me. As I endure my trials and tests, sometimes I feel so alone. I am unable to see beyond my present circumstances. I ask that you will remove the scales from my eyes during these times so that I can see your hand at work and help me to, to always feel your presence near and around me. May I be so in tune with your works that I will sense your holy presence leading and guiding me, especially through my challenges. Lord, I have come to realize that I need a closer walk with you. I need a closer, deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I desire the Holy Spirit so that he may teach me your ways and principles, Lord Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give me a revelation on who you are, Lord and what your will is for me. I pray that I may have a strong and lasting encounter with the Holy Ghost, an encounter that I will remember and one that will give me the resilience to remain strong in the Lord, even as I endure difficulties or if despair threatens to overwhelm me. Help me to claim the relief that you offer, King Jesus. 
Please show me how to let go of my losses, knowing that some things and some friends and people even will be removed from my life. And in the bigger picture of your plan, these things will happen for my benefit. I ask that you remove my longing for toxic and ungodly things that will only lead to my demise. Instead, Holy Spirit, I pray that you set my heart on things above concerning my Savior. May you give me comfort and release me from my sorrows. Release me from my worries and replace my fear and doubts with your amazing love. A love that knows no borders. A love that is so relentless that even in my weakest state, in my sinful state, you still offer me a way to eternal life. I am grateful that your word in John 16 verse 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You are a mighty God that has overcome this world and given me good reason to cheer so that even as I face my own challenges, in you I will have peace. I will have victory. I long for a deeper encounter with you. I want to live a victorious life in the Lord. Empowered me to be a believer who is totally dependent on Jesus Christ. Remove my self-sufficiency and help me to walk by faith, not by sight. Grant me the peace that Jesus has promised me, peace beyond understanding, and keep this assurance before me so that I will live an overcomer's life through your strength. Teach me the ways of God, Holy Spirit. Open my mind and my understanding about how I should live as a child of God. When the way ahead of me looks dim and dark, help me not to be afraid and to trust completely in you. May you reveal to me God's will for my life and draw me into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, my Savior who made the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary's cross for my sins. Your word says that when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Thank you that the Holy Spirit has come, not only as a Comforter, but one who will lead me into all truth. I pray that he convicts me of my faults, convict me to repent, Holy Spirit, and bring me to true repentance as I seek to walk in the way of truth. Please grant me the wisdom to discern between truth and error, and give me the strength always to choose to do what is right and pleasing to the Lord. Lord, I take comfort in your word in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, which says, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I thank you for giving me freedom and liberty, King Jesus. I believe that as I draw near to you and you draw closer to me, I will be free from the hold of sin in my life. Holy Spirit, I am weak, but you are strong. So empower me as I pray. May I have a mind fixed on the kingdom of God. I invite you to be my counselor and my friend. Set me free from my wayward tendencies and desires. Free my mind from worries and cares, for I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and of sound mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that each and every day, may you anoint me and surround me with the presence of God. As I embrace your presence and power, I ask that my life will reflect my journey with you. I want to be a living testimony of your work, Holy Spirit. Help me to use the gifts that you have blessed me with to minister to others. There is so much hurt and need in this world, so equip me for service in the kingdom of God, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence and your power. 
I pray that you bless me, Lord, and remain with me always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.